Gold, treasure, pirates. Stories of coastal ships being taken over by ruthless ocean robbers have been told for hundreds of years, but among all of them, one man stands out the most, Blackbeard. Our shivering timbers, what a slobbering moist morning. Reading one of my son's favorite books to him allows for imaginations to run wild. Put on me hook, me boots, me three-corner hats, the only clothes fit for a pirate. But when it comes to any child, including Preston, questions always follow. Why do they have to walk the plane? What is that hat on their head for? What's with the eye patch? Daddy, are you a pirate? To find some of the answers to his questions about pirates, I wanted to take him to follow in the footsteps of where one of the most famous pirates in North Carolina lived, fought, and died. Blackbeard was a real pirate, not like the stuff you see on the telly or on a motion picture screen. Blackbeard was real and he lived and he died right here in North Carolina. Why were you a pirate? I was a pirate slightly over one year, perhaps a year and a half, but less than two years. But during that time, my reputation became that of the most feared pirate who ever set sail. I also became one of the richest pirates who had ever set sail. <laughs> Blackbeard's background is still not 100% known. Some say he was born in Jamaica and moved to England as a child. Others show his birthplace as England. What is a fact, though, is he came to be known as one of the most feared pirates of the Atlantic. Going into battle, I used to put slow matches. It was a kind of fuse made from small halyard soaked in lime juice and then rolled over in gunpowder. I'd put them in my beard after they dried, and then I'd set fire to them, and it made it look like my head was on fire. <laughs> Toward the end of his piracy days, Blackbeard decided to settle down in the town of Bath, where he swore to give up piracy. Why on earth would a man like Blackbeard give up piracy, says you? Well, let me tell you. We had a new king, King George I, and he hated pirates. He hated piracy. He vowed he'd bring an end to piracy in the new world. So Preston, we came here to the town of Bath where Blackbeard lived. In fact, his name, one of his names was Edward Teach, as you see here on the sign. Mm -hmm. And he died in Ocracoke, but he did live here in the town for a little bit. He lived right across the river, in fact, for a good amount of time. We know he came into Bath. He came here in the summer and accepted the king's pardon to give up piracy from Governor Eden. You see, I knew Governor Charles Eden quite well, and I knew he'd give me the king's pardon. The king had done said, if you give up piracy and swear you'll never do it again, I will see that you get a pardon with no punishment. <laughs> well, piracy in them days was always punishable by death. Bath was the crossing point to when Blackbeard supposedly gave up his piracy days and received his pardon. He'd intentionally sunk his flagship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, to show his end of piracy and let most of his crew go. Yet, we all know his life came to a tragic end off the coast of North Carolina. So we hopped on board the ferry to check out Ocracoke Island, where this story continues. He is the most famous probably in the world. There's probably more merchandise has been fashioned after the looks of Blackbeard than any other pirate that's ever, ever lived. Once on Ocracoke, we took a stop at Teach's Whole Gift Shop and Museum. That's where we got to see examples of how Blackbeard lived. Then Preston and I hitched a ride out into the Pamlico Sound with Captain Rob Temple to learn more on how this story ends. Where did Blackbeard die? It, it all came to an abrupt end right here on November 22nd, 1718, when Blackbeard was anchored right off Springer's Point in this area which we now call Teach's Hole. He had a sloop called the Adventure with 18 men aboard, and early in the morning, uh, he was approached by two Navy sloops commanded by the Royal Navy Lieutenant Robert Maynard, sent down here by the governor of Virginia to get Blackbeard. The pirates only saw a couple of men moving around on deck, so they thought it would be easy to finish them off, and they grappled alongside and boarded Maynard's sloop. But as soon as Blackbeard and his men got on the deck of Maynard's sloop, the hatch opened and 20 men jumped out on deck shooting their pistols and swinging swords. And it wasn't long before Blackbeard had five bullets in him and 20 sword wounds. As soon as my headless body hit that water, I started to swim. <laughs> headless I be, but swimming I was. 
Some will tell you I swam around that ship as many as seven times looking for me. Of course, that's a lie. Truth is, I only swam around it twice. So Blackbeard's story ends here. Or does it? After all, 300 years after his death, we're still continuing to think about him and celebrating the greatest pirate ever. And maybe one day we'll see his headless body swimming around Teach's Hole looking for his head. Until then, we'll just have to let our imaginations run free. He handed me a map with X marked the spot. Artifacts from Blackbeard's flagship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, are on display in Beaufort at the North Carolina Maritime Museum. The shipwreck was discovered off the coast of North Carolina in 1995.